So all three major indexes pulling back after weak retail sales, rising virus concerns, and, of course, a lot of political unrest and unease about what's happening in Afghanistan, to say the very least. Joining us now to discuss University of Maryland economist Peter Morisi and Bonson Group managing partner David Bonson. Good to see you both, guys. David, first to you, some of this pullback, of course, has to do with the retail sales. But on the other hand, a lot of the money that would have gone to retail sales went to restaurants. It went to uh, vacation spending uh, and so, so forth. So a lot of it was just diverted from retail sales because people were getting out and around, no? Yeah, a lot more services spending and less good spending. Mm. And even just the good spending, which declined from the month prior, is way ahead of trend line growth, meaning this pent up demand story is real, that people were so frustrated by the lack of economic activity during the lockdowns that they've been out spending more. And I think you're exactly right. Restaurants, vacations, they're going to feel more of the pent up demand. But it was goods that was feeling it a couple months ago. That's all we're seeing here. Well, Peter, personally, I'm more worried about production than I am on spending. Uh, you had a New York manufacturing number that was bad that came out yesterday. Uh, you have over 10 million unfilled jobs now, which means fewer people working, fewer people making things. That's that that helps inflation go up because the fewer goods you have, the more you pay for each item. Uh, and of course, on services as well. Are you more worried as I am about production than spending? Absolutely. We have many choke points in the economy. We have many supply constraints. There's adequate demand. Uh, and we have a situation where businesses have to make decisions about new investments that are two, three, five, seven, ten year affairs. And one has to consider about the leadership of this country. Uh, they were already quite worried about the tax proposals that this president was making and the anti-wealth attitude of his wokey administration. But now, with the events of the last week, with so many investments having an international scope, are they confident that they will be welcome abroad, that people will have confidence in the United States of America. Uh, I have to say that there's a large balance issue here, and it's called Afghanistan, and it's called Joe Biden. And I think that's affecting the markets, and I think it's affecting the outlook for investment in the supply chain. And, Peter, now investors might have to worry about terrorism again. I mean, thankfully, that's been on the back burner, if at all, on the top of the stove for the past couple of years. I'm from the United States, and you should believe me. How can the Germans be expected to take that seriously after Joe Biden won't even take a phone call out there at Camp David? Right, right. David, what, uh, what do you think about the, the fear of what's happening in Afghanistan, how the, the world could spin out of control as a result of it? Well, let's look at two angles here. In the very, very short term, the market was up over 100 yesterday and down True. over 200 today. It's basically right at an all-time high. Yeah. Markets are not ready to respond to this immediate news. But is the world less safe than it was? Of course it is. And, and do we have a broader problem of apathy around the threats that the United States faces. That's my concern longer term. I totally agree with Peter, and, and you made the comment too, David, the production side of the economy is what's at risk here. Yeah. It's been at risk since the financial crisis. Ultimately, I would like the country to take seriously the jihadist threat again, and at the same time, America's moral leadership be restored. It's been deteriorating for a long time, but I don't think the market's are ready to respond to it yet because that's not the way they work. It takes a long time for that to happen, so I'm afraid of it longer term, but I don't think it's a catalyst in the immediacy, immediate ahead, short term. My real concern is that it is starting to affect business and investment decisions. And so that the supply constraints we are encountering right now will not be alleviated as rapidly as they could. And that is a real threat to the recovery. I mean, businesses are making money right now. Profits are very strong. They're expected to continue rising. So the market has support. Where will we be a year from now after Joe Biden? That's the question. Yeah, and, and we do, as much as we love to hate China, David, uh, China is having a lot of problems. And, and uh, a lot of people saying, great, I'm glad that China is having problems. But that, that creates more supply chain problems mm -hmm. for us, doesn't it? It does. And you also have to look at the specific nature of their problems. They may have trouble exporting products out to us right now. 
but their currency and their debt markets are not suffering problems. Their bonds are rallying substantially. Mm. They're attracting more global capital. Are people more confident that the U.S. will have Taiwan and Hong Kong's back now? Mm. I don't think so. David? So I think in a lot of ways this is working favorably to China and opposed to the U.S. interests. I don't know if you can see, David, but Peter was shaking his head. What do you you think, Peter, about that? Well, the thing about China is it has a much more self-contained capital market because the yuan is not really convertible. And they yeah. can, and they have a, a trade surplus and trillions of dollars in U.S. reserves. They can essentially bail out any bank they want, make mm. any loans that they want, and so we cannot see their debt overhang in the same terms we would okay. here in, in the United States or yeah. if it was Germany. So the Chinese have a lot of freedom of action, but what's going on in China is a constraint on U.S. conditions. David, uh, we don't have much time at all, but I'm trying to put a little lipstick on the pig of what's happening with Afghanistan and this administration. Is it possible that maybe they won't get all those trillion dollar spending plans in now because of the debacle in Afghanistan, that maybe their support even from Democrats will wane? Yeah, my eight second answer is I agree. I think that there's moderate Democrats in the House and Senate that right now the political capital of the administration is going to force them towards the right side of this fiscal bill. I think you're exactly right, David. Peter, you agree or disagree? We only have five seconds. Uh, I agree completely. I'm really hopeful that eight or ten Democrats okay. have an epiphany uh, and, 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 come ac- and, and align themselves with okay. the Republicans and block all this all nonsense. Right. little lipstick on the pig here. Guys, thank you very much. Good stuff. I appreciate it. Coming up, the patriotic...